Hi there. Uh, just uh, early in the morning here in Belfast and um, uh, enjoying a little bit of a sprinkling. I'm in an outside garden just behind uh, the place where I'm staying. Beautiful, beautiful. If it was a little clearer outside, I'd be able to show you some of the environment. It's it's beautiful green. There's right behind me on the on the hilltop is uh, a tower, well known uh, um, site in the area here, uh, just outside of Belfast, called Scrabo Tower. But I want to talk to you for a few minutes today. You know, I was looking at this video that was posted just uh, I think June fourth or fifth. And I was speaking in our church in Spruce Grove Community Church. And when I was speaking, I uh, went back and looked at the video which Jesse uh, had posted and released for us. And um, as I was doing that, I was reminded of something. I talked about a bunch of things, but something really struck me about superstition. Now, I, I looked it up here. And superstition means this, it's a, it's a noun. It's a belief or a notion in or of the ominous significance of particular things, circumstances, occurrences, proceedings, or the like. And so I begin to think about uh, the fact that we live in a world that's superstitious. I grew up playing hockey and uh, I wasn't completely inundated with superstition because I had um, you know, a faith background to some degree. But uh, when I was watching some of my other friends, and I hear stories from time to time about sports players, how they would go through a certain routine. They would go through a certain, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, well, a superstitious deal where they were, if they touched certain things, if they didn't touch certain things, if they tied their laces in a certain sequence, Anyway, it struck me that the sense of providence or the sense that good luck would follow me if I did this or uh, bad luck would follow me if I did not do this seems to prevail. And there's a scripture in Galatians chapter 4 verse 9. It talks about the beggarly elemental principles and how there are laws that around legalism, in fact, the whole exhortation of Galatians 4 is about Paul saying to the people, listen, you've been delivered from superstition. You've been delivered from that idea that, that if I cross my T's and I dot my I's around elements of the law, the Judea, Judaistic law, you know, that, that you're delivered from that. And this is what God is trying to tell us. Listen, you may not be a Jew. You may not have the idea that, uh, you know, traditions around the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath, and the fear that if I don't do this properly on the Sabbath, all of these bad things are going to cascade down upon my life. But you may have other fears. You may have other superstitions that, and it may be above the idea of that, oh, I spilt the salt, I broke a mirror. Here in Ireland, we were just talking this morning, and there was the idea that magpies, if I see one magpie, that means sorrow. And I need to, I need to, you know, if I see one magpie, I need to make sure I see a second one. And if I see three, that's a great sign because that means joy. Now, you may not even know you have these superstitions in your life, but they're triggers that you equate good fortune or bad fortune to. Now, here's the problem. Oh, I'm a Christian. I don't have that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter if you're a Christian, what you believe in your heart. See, this is the thing. When I became a Christian, I still had these superstitious leanings and it began, to, it, it, it manifested in my life in terms of, I had to pray a certain way. I had to make sure at the end of every prayer, I said, in the name of Jesus. Or I had to uh, articulate it with a certain fervor or a certain strength, or I had to do it in a certain sequence. I remember having to put my spiritual armor on every day, and I felt vulnerable if I didn't do that. Now, here's the thing. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So you cannot pretend you don't believe something that you believe. You can't bypass superstitious thoughts if that's actually what guides your heart. If you spill the salt and a fear grips you, a foreboding, then that thing has rule over you. 
And this is the way it works in terms of kingdom laws, that the world around us is ruled by laws. There are lower laws and there are higher laws. You are subject, for example, to the natural law of gravity. You can supersede that. You can rise above the law of gravity by applying another law, aerodynamics, the laws of lift, uh, laws of physics that enable you to transcend the power of gravity, enable you to transcend uh, likewise in the spirit faith, when you actually believe something to be true that enacts a higher law, then you're delivered from the lower law. And what Paul is saying in Galatians chapter 4, verse 9, it says, listen, we've been subject to certain laws and certain rules that bind us through fear or shame or guilt or these other things. If you are bound to that by your faith, if you actually believe that those apply to you, then they apply to you. If you do not actually in your heart believe that they do not apply to you, then they do not apply to you. But you have to believe as a man believes. And so here's what God is doing in our lives is he is gradually shifting us away from superstition. He's wanting to break in your life your superstitions, whatever they may be. It may not be as concrete as magpies, black cats, broken mirrors, spilt salt, but it still may be something. And God is saying, listen, you need to believe that my providence and my love, my acceptance of you, aside from the circumstantial details of your life, that my will for you if it is, is going to be unlocked by your faith. And so there's a faith that God wants to bring to us into today that brings us above the elemental principles of the earth, superstition, fear, uh, guilt, shame, these kinds of things. But it has to be real. You actually have to believe that these things apply to you and don't apply. And here's what happens is, is over the course of your life, as God shifts your heart and your attitude away from uh, doing the right things to, no, God just loves me, there eventually begins to be this, this ease, this rest in your life that, you don't have to be crossing your T's and dotting your I's to make sure that God's wrath doesn't cascade down on your life today. You just start to live in the rest of God. That is an actual thing. It's not, it's, it's, it's not illusionary. And you don't enter into it by denying that you have fear if you have fear. Faith releases you. It causes you to operate in a level of freedom that superstition uh, cannot bind you anymore. It can't keep you. It can't hold you down. That foreboding, that negativity, that, that shadow over the back of your, your head just isn't there anymore. And so God is wanting to deliver us today. And you are in a process in your life where God is delivering you from these things into the liberty of the sons of God. So I want to exhort you to just continue in the journey. Be honest with yourself. When God starts to point out that, hey, you have this thing in you, that causes you to go to super, super, uh, sorry, superstitious mm, patterns in order to make yourself feel free from circumstances, from consequences. You have to admit that. You have to repent from it. You have to say, God, I, I want to live in faith. I don't want to be having to wrap my stick in a certain way. I don't want to have to touch the doorposts on the way out of the car. Uh, or out of the house. I don't want to have to go through these false rituals that are really meaningless, but are powerful if I believe them. So here's the thing, and it applies to your personal life, it applies to ministry, it applies to all kinds of things. Sometimes we believe that the grace of God, the providence of God, the goodwill of God, the supplies of God are going to be released if all my ducks are in a row. Uh, God wants to set you free from that, but it's a gradual process. Cooperate with the work. Be honest, repent, but uh, begin to ask God, even right now, Lord, are there ways that I have allowed ministry protocols, maybe behaviors, cultural, Christian sayings, styles that I believe are the keys to unlocking the mountain of God and God's resources to my life, God, free me from these things. Free me from my uh, belief that the tie I wear, the suit I don't wear, the jeans I wear, the jeans I don't wear, 
the food I eat, the food I don't eat, are the keys to releasing your blessing in my life. These are not the keys, unless you believe they're the keys, in which case you're bound to them. But there is a higher order, and God is releasing us into that higher order through actual play, play, uh, actual faith. So the, the question is, what do you actually believe in your heart? What do I, deep down, what do I believe? So I'm praying right now, Holy Spirit, come to our lives, manifest those things that we actually believe, the things that release or do not release your providence upon our lives, and uh, may we walk in the full bounty of what you've provided for us. I pray in Jesus' name. So listen, I want to encourage you, if you have a time, because there's so much more in it, go back to that feed, that video from June 4th, June 5th, where I spoke in the church. There's a lot more things there about the heart, about what God's trying to do in our hearts uh, to liberate us, to bring us into sonship, fully into sonship, to walk in the the measure of authority and his love that he wants us to walk in. Uh, go have a look at that and uh, be in touch and uh, we'll talk to you very soon.